Now in high school, you'll learn that if you lift an object up, applying a force for a certain displacement, you do work on it. In particular, you're increasing its gravitational potential energy. Now, if we were to graph that, we would get this. So we're applying a constant force, which is usually the weight of the object over a certain displacement, which is going to be the height of the object. And so when we multiply that out, we get mgh, in other words, the increase in potential energy. And that just happens to be the area underneath the graph. But it's a little bit more complex than that, because two issues. First of all, we're actually starting at a position that we've labeled as zero for energy, when it actually is not. And secondly, as I lift the object up, the gravitational force that I'm overcoming actually gets weaker. So if I take my ball and move it a far away distance from the Earth, as it approaches the Earth, the force gets greater as the displacement gets greater. But where is the force the least? Well, that's at a point, at an infinite point away. And so as a result, we're going to get a different graph. In that case, my graph is not going to be this, it's going to be this. The further and further I go away, the smaller the amount of work I do as I bring it closer to the surface of the Earth, which basically means the way to work out the change in energy is to say, well, where is it zero? That's at infinity. So how do we work out the potential energy? Well, we'll start at the position zero. So that is way over here at infinity. And we'll stop at a position, let's say R, which is going to be the surface of the Earth. What do we do now? Well, we actually are interested in finding the area underneath that graph. And because this is a curve, it's where integration comes in. So what we're actually interested in is the integral of the force with respect to the displacement from a point of infinity away to a point of our radius of the Earth, which we're going to call R. What I now do is substitute in the formula for force. In this case, the force is not mg, but this. In other words, it's dependent on the gravitational constant, the mass of one object, the mass of the other object, divided by the distance between them squared. Now to integrate this, we can take the g and m and m outside. So we get g big m little m outside and then integrate what we have left over, which is a one over x squared with respect to x. Now the integral of one over x squared or x to the negative two is actually equal to negative one over x. And of course, we're going from infinity to R. All that is left now to do is expand this out. When I substitute R in, I get negative G big M little m over R minus negative G big M little m over. Now, of course, this approaches infinity. So basically, we can write infinity over there. This actually approaches zero. What we end up getting is simply negative g big M little m over r. And that is our potential energy. And there we have the derivation for the gravitational potential energy. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe and put a comment down below if this is helpful for you. My name is Paul from Physics High. Bye for now.